right in time for spring, Audi has introduced a convertible version of its A5 Coupe to replace the A4 convertible. It has a traditional fabric top instead of a metal folding roof and is available with a wide selection of engines. They range from the 1.8T with 160 horsepower to the 333 horsepower compressor engine in the top of the line S5 Cabrio. Volvo has given its S80 sedan a makeover. The changes are subtle, but make the car look bigger than its predecessor. The redesigned front end is more dynamic, too. Volvo has also expanded the number of engines available. The new dual-turbo D5 diesel produces 205 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque. And it is advertised to need just 6.2 liters of fuel for 100 kilometers. When most people hear of SEAT, they think of small cars. Well, it's time to think again. Meet the Exeo, an upmarket mid-size sedan with unmistakable lineage. The new Spaniard is based on the 2007 Audi A4. The name Exeo means I go forth, and that's what SEAT seems to be doing with this car, going forth into a market it hasn't tested in a long time. Seat spokesman Alexander Skiba says the Exeo is a logical step for the brand to take. He says it offers Seat drivers a vehicle that enables them to stick with Seat when they've decided to buy a larger car. But it also enables Seat to attract new customers, like business people who drive a lot. The Exeo offers them high quality at a low price. It took just 18 months to transport the Audi A4 assembly lines from Bavaria to the Seat factory in Martorell, Spain. The move included 1,200 truckloads of equipment. The plant can produce 450 Exeos a day. But Seat did much more than just move an assembly line. 1,800 components, or about 30% of the car's parts, were changed or modified to give the Exeo its own look and make it instantly recognizable as a member of the Seat family. That's evident in the grill with the logo placed boldly front and center. Then there's the rakish lines that are classic Seat. The sharply contoured headlights that curve smoothly into the side underscore the car's sporty image. The interior is tasteful and attractive and has seating for five people. From the rear, the car is also easy to identify as a Seat. The large tail lights are a mark of class, and the trunk has 460 liters of space for luggage. The car we tested came with a 170 horsepower diesel. Alexander Skiba tells us the Exeo is available with six different engines, three diesels and three gasoline engines. All of them meet Euro 5 emission standards, and the diesels are all highly efficient and smooth-running common rail diesels. On the highway, the 170-horsepower diesel can cover 100 kilometers on 5.8 liters of fuel. The car accelerates from 0 to 100 in 8.4 seconds and has a top speed of 229 kilometers an hour. All in all, the Exeo makes a very favorable impression. The car's ride is somewhat softer than with competing models offered by Volkswagen and Skoda. Plus, the new Exeo costs about 3,000 euros less than the Audi A4 it's based on did in 2007. That should help Seat gain inroads into the mid-size car segment.
With its new Yeti 4x4, Skoda is looking to get a big foot in the door of the booming compact SUV market. The small off-roader from the Czech car maker borrows components from Volkswagen's Tiguan, but the exterior is more akin to Skoda's own Roomster minivan. Large wheels and underbody protection add to the Yeti's rugged appearance. Officially still in the concept stage, Yeti is slated to go into production later this year. The Indian car maker Tata has unveiled the European version of the Nano. The four-door hatchback squeezes 105 kilometers an hour out of its 33-horsepower engine and burns less than 5 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers. Nano Europa is more fully featured than its Indian counterpart and meets all safety and environmental standards. Tata's car for the masses is due to arrive in 2011 or 2012. The automobile industry may be going through a difficult period, but that hasn't stunted the creativity and imagination of engineers and designers looking for ways to make their cars more efficient. Innovative ideas and new trends are also emerging in hybrid vehicles. One big attraction at the Geneva Car Show was this eye-catching sports car with a curious name, the Namir, which means tiger in Arabic. We decided to make a, a sort of exotic car, a very aggressive, very uh, fascinated we can, uh, if I can say. Um, under this uh, shape, there is a system that allows the car to be really fast. The car will be more than 300 km per hour, but in the city, we have a consuming of 2 liters per 100 km and an emission of 60 grams per kilometer. The front end bears the red G that distinguishes all Jujaro prototypes, and the car's sharp lines are typical of the designer's style. But the Namir, which is said to be the world's fastest hybrid, is a joint effort. Fraser Nash is not a car company, it's not a M, it's a uh, company nearly like us. They make design in terms of powertrain, so they are specialized in hybrid, and we are specialized in uh, all the rest which is not uh, uh, a powertrain, so in body, in styling, you know and the packaging. So together we decided to show what we can do pushing that system at the maximum level in terms of styling and in terms of uh, system. Purist minimalism was not Jujaro's intention when he designed the interior. There are three touchscreen monitors that deliver information and serve as controls. The driver is surrounded by exquisite materials. The two seats are made of leather and Alcantara. The car's heart beats behind those seats. We have a four electric motor that give the, the, the drive directly to the wheels. Battery in the middle of the car, just 150 kilos of battery, and a special generator uh, using a Venkel engine that gives the power to the battery and then to the system. So it's a four-wheel drive without transmission. There's no transmission at all. And I think today is really the best that you can have on a car like this. The car's chassis is made of carbon fiber to save weight. The British-Italian project shows that modern hybrid technology also has potential for sports cars. It's not yet clear whether the world's fastest hybrid will go into production but the chances are pretty good that something like it will hit the streets eventually.